Hello and welcome to lesson 8 of our study of mathematical biology. So in lesson 8, we are going to talk about a different model aside the SIR that we've been talking about. So this is called the SEIR model with vital dynamics and force of infection. Okay, so you can see that the only odd thing here is the E. So in many infectious diseases, there is an exposed period after the transmission of infection from susceptibles to potentially infective members before these potentially infectives develop symptoms and can transmit infection. So you know with the SIR model, Kemak and McKendrick group the population into three classes. That's those who are susceptible. They have never gotten a disease, but they can catch it upon exposure to an infected person. The second class was the infectives, those who have the disease and can transmit it. And the third was the recovered, those who had re recovered and they have um, permanent immunity. But they didn't include a class that's when the susceptibles get into contact with the infectives. Not all of them get the disease. And even if they get a disease, there is an incubation period where they don't show signs and symptoms and they can transmit the disease to other people. So that means such people shouldn't belong to the infective class. So we have what we call the exposure class, okay? So here we incorporate an exposed period with mean exposed period, one over kappa into the SIR model to get the SEIR model. I hope we get it. So we are getting this model from the SIR. Okay, so let's look at the compartmental diagram for it. So you can see that we have S, we have E, so we have our S, E, I, and T. All right? And we are doing it with vital dynamics. That means we include birth and death rates. So our alpha here is the birth rate. You know, when people are born into the population, they become susceptible. Then the mu's are death rates. So the mu here, for instance, is those who die from the susceptible class. The one here is those who die from the exposed class those who die from the infective class, and those who die from the recovered class. Okay, so we have our parameters here, you can see them. All right, so we have to learn how to derive the equations for this model. You know, since we have four things, S, E, I, and R, we are going to have four different equations, okay? So, most of the times, the arrow, okay, shows the number of equations that we will have. So when it comes to S, you know S has two, three arrows. One, two, three. That means you are going to have three different parts of the equation for what the S, the T. And the arrow also shows whether we have positive or negative. So you can see this arrow is moving away from S. So the equation here will be negative. The one here is also moving away from S, negative, and it's moving into S, so positive. So our the S D T is alpha N minus beta S I over N minus mu S. Alright. Then when it comes to the exposed period, this is moving into it. This is moving away. This is moving away. So we are going to have three parts of the equations too. So we have beta S I over N minus kappa e minus mu e you know the over n is the force of infection okay then we have the i d t to be equal to so the i d t to this one is coming into it and this one is going away and this one is also going away so we have kappa e minus alpha and uh, minus gamma i minus mu i and this will be for the rdt okay 
all right so after having these four equations these four equations what we do is that we want to eliminate the n by scaling them okay so note that when you add a four class the population was divided into four class so if you should add people from the four classes we are going to have our total population n and when you divide through by n we have this then this and this will give us one so we have this so by doing this scaling, what we do is that we let small s at t represent capital s at t over n that means this represents this this represents this and so on okay so after that then you realize that to get your capital s of t it will be small s of t times n and so on so that yields equation a and after getting equation A, we find the derivatives at both sides of each of them. All right. So we are going to have, for instance, when you take S here, you have the S dt will be equal to N dS dt. So the first one is capital A, the second one is small s. All right. And so we do that one throughout, and we also call these sets of equations, and we call them equation B. So what we do is that this equation A and this equation B, we substitute them into equation a b c d okay so we turn them into equation a b c d yeah i'm calling them one two three four okay so the same as a b c d so when you substitute it into equation a wherever you find the capital s d t you put what and the small s d t there Wherever you find s, you put what small s and and the whole lot. So when you do that substitution, you're going to get this. Then this n cancels this. So that means you have this. And here you can see from the right hand side we have a common factor which is n. So we can bring that one out. Then it cancels through. Then we have this. So we call this equation five. So you can see now we've eliminated our n. We don't have any n there, so we've scaled it. Then when it goes to the second one, so we are going to have this. There is over n here. So this cancels this. Then we have this thing here. So since at the right hand side n is a common factor, we can bring that one out. So we have this. Then when we do we divide through by n we have this okay so we do the same thing for the rest of the two equations remaining so here too we do this we bring n out and then we have this okay then we call this equation seven and when you put it inside d d to we have this we bring n out they cancel through and we have this and we call it equation eight so that means after scaling our four equations, that's equation A, B, C, D, we are going to have these four equations. Okay, sorry. Let me open my one note. So, sorry for the interruption working okay. have these four equations right so our new equations which have been scaled we have these so after getting this what we want to do is to you know justify the constant population all right so one assumption is that the population is constant so to justify that we add equations five, six, seven, and eight. All right. So when we add them, we'll get the S D T plus the E D T plus the I D T plus the R D T equals alpha minus beta S I minus mean a whole lot. So you can see this will cancel this. This cancels this. And this cancels this. So you'll be left with this. 
Now you can see here, mu is a common factor, so we can bring that one out and we have this. But s plus e plus i plus r is equal to 1. So we put that one in, we get this. And if you know that one assumption is that the population is constant. And the population being constant means birth rate is equal to what? Death rate. So that means our alpha is equal to what? Our mu. Do we get it? So that means alpha minus mu will be zero. So we we'll then have d dt s plus e plus i plus r is equal to zero. So integrating both sides, we will have s of t plus e of t plus i of t plus r of t is equal to constant. Now you should know that the whole of this here is the population, right? So that means n is constant. So that means our population n is constant. So that this is a quick intro of the SEIR model. Okay, so in our next lesson, that's lesson nine, we we'll learn how to derive the basic reproductive number R0 for SEIR model using the next generation metrics. So thank you very much and see you in the next lesson. So I'm with you and Renov, a final year student of mathematics, KNUST. It's a pleasure coming away with this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. See ya.